Sometimes forex trading is a wild and woolly place to be. That's why Hughes here. To pose your questions to Walter, the naked forex guy. Hughes got questions and Walter's got the answers. Here at the Truth About FX Podcast. Hey Walter, we got a question here. It's a little bit broad, but I know both of us get get this question a lot, but um, I'd like to see what you're going to say about it. It basically just says, "I need help testing my strategy to go live." What do you, where does somebody yeah. begin with that? Okay, so it sounds like when it said well, the question is, "I I need help t- testing my strategy." So the assumption is, "I have a strategy." Okay, so I have a strategy and I want to test it and go live. Mm-hmm. Okay, so first of all, congratulations because you've identified one of the main issues, which is. You're lacking Mm -hmm. confidence. So how do you build confidence? I read this question as, I don't have confidence in my system. I want to trade live. How do I get from where I am now to where I want to be, which is trading this confidently Mm -hmm. live? Okay, great question. So this is what you do. You do a complete, you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, when when you're going to buy a house or I guess if you were going to buy a racehorse (laughs) or, or, you know, a dog or like a like a greyhound race dog, what you would do is you would, you would, before you buy the house or you buy the horse, you'd have someone come and look at it and say, okay, this is a pretty good horse, you know, or this horse has a gimpy leg or, you know, like if you're going to tra- uh, play in the NFL, if you play in the NFL, right, in the National Football League, what do they do? They, they poke and prod you and they x-ray you and give our MRIs and make sure that you haven't been completely beat up before you got mm-hmm. to the NFL, right? They want to know what's wrong with that knee or that shoulder or whatever. Well, it's, and, and the same thing with a the house. They want to make sure there aren't any termites or the foundation is cracked or, you know, the plumbing is a bit off or whatever, yeah. right? So... That's what you do with your trading system. You do the exact same thing. And the way that I recommend doing this is to simply go through a, a basically like a three or four step process depending on how you see it. Number one is you you use this system in Forex Tester. There's a link in the show notes. You can get Forex Tester. You can get it, the course on how to use Forex Tester for free. I'll link that in the show notes too for you so you can get that course. It's a little bit quirky. It's kind of hard to use. But once you get it, it's pretty, you know, it's it's like anything. Once you get it, you mm-hmm. get it. Test that system in Forex Tester. Take hundreds of trades. Then go and do a demo account. So step one is Forex Tester. Get lots and lots of trades under your belt. See if you can triple your account. Then go to your demo account. Now that's going to be different because now you have to wait for the candles to unfold in real time, whereas Forex Tester, you can accelerate it. Try and triple your demo account. Then get a little tiny, tiny account. Tiny is different to everyone. It could be $100. It could be 2000 Whatever is tiny to you and money that you can just play with. And do the same thing. Execute your system as you did before in the other two phases and try and triple your account. Now you're getting to the point, this fourth step, where you're ready to go with your, quote, live account or your standard account or whatever. Uh, that's what I would recommend doing. And I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on this. But that's kind of my my take is that you kind of take baby steps so that by the time you get to your live trading, you're so ready for this to get going and you're so confident. You've had so many trades under your belt. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, I actually applaud the whoever wrote in this question because, um, you know, generally most people, myself included, we would just want to jump to live. And uh, it, I'm glad that they recognize that they don't, you know, they're not confident in the system yet and that they need some help to, um, to go live with it. But yeah, I would agree with you. Same steps. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's tough, especially like the back testing. Sometimes you don't want to do it. Sometimes it's a little boring, but, um, you just do whatever you need to do to make it interesting and kind of focus on that goal of having, you know, a profitable system that you can trade confidently. Yeah. And so like, if you get into trouble, what do you do? Like I, I would, I would recommend in most cases, like, let's say you're going through Forex Tester and it's just not as good as you, it, you know, the results aren't quite there. Well, there are things that you can tweak. Like, you can tweak the risk to reward by changing the exit strategy. Well, I, look, the temptation is to, to add a new indicator or add a new rule or something like that. But that's usually not the answer. Usually the answer is going to be somewhere in the exit where the way, the way that you get out of these trades changes the dynamic of what you know, what the, what the system is expected to return. So that's one thing that I would point out is that sometimes 
when you're doing this, you get a little bit disappointed at some stage. Usually for me, it's usually in Forex Tester. That's, that's usually where most of them fall apart is in a Forex Tester. And so you have to rethink this and say, well, either, I'm not, either that this system doesn't work for me, it doesn't really jive with my, you know, how I trade, or you tweak the exit, which is usually, I think, the more fruitful avenue for most traders. But it's going to depend on, on how, like, in other words, what I'm saying is, if you've got a, a reliable entry strategy that you have, just leave it. It's, it's not that critical. Mm. What really matters is is the management of the of the exits, and that's going to help you make the largest gains in most cases. So yeah, that's a good point. That's another thing I think I should. Yeah, do you find that? Do you find that as well? Uh, yeah, I actually something else that I found interesting recently was that one thing that I tested had like an eighty percent win rate on the longs, but the shorts were like thirty percent. So, you know, if you're getting mediocre results, then looking at stuff like that might help or, you know, day of the week type stuff um, and just eliminating a day or eliminating only going long or something like that might might make the system a lot better. I don't know. It's something to look at. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. It could be time of day, day of week. It could be going long or short, um, you know, and obviously, like, there is a book. I don't know if people have – I don't think very many people have read it. But I'll put a link to it in the show notes. There's a book where these traders basically, you know, they they had the system, and I, I was fascinated because they, um, you know, they thought they had this really cool system, and they really bet hard on the risk. Like the risk management was pretty aggressive. But what ended up happening is, in the end, um, I'll, I'll ruin it for you. Um, in the in the end, it didn't. It worked quite well, but then it fell apart. And the reason why it fell apart was in their back testing. They were back testing during a really strong trending period. And they didn't take that into consideration. Mm, so okay. when they went live, you know what I mean? And that's the same thing. Like um, like what you're talking about, that could happen if you had a really um, a limited amount of – like if, you were, if you're backtesting during a bullish market, right? So like you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Like what a lot of people will do is they'll split it into, into chunks. So you'll backtest it in this chunk of – time period and this one and that one and stuff like that. So if you've got a long enough time period and you've seen bull and you can look at the chart and you can see it's bullish and it's bearish, then and you still get this problem, then then absolutely I would I would definitely say, yeah, I agree. But sometimes what happens is people don't you know, they don't actually backtest all different types of markets, the choppy up and down consolidating versus the bearish versus the bullish and all that sort of thing. So that's another thing to keep in mind because that should be a red flag, right? When you see that you go because mm -hmm. either you're right, either it's okay. We don't we don't short this. This is a this is a this is only for buys only. Or it's uh let's see let's have a look at my data and see if it was like you know this like horrendous uptrend for day, for years yeah. or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Because that because yeah, that yeah. can color your yeah yeah. It's a good point. Good point. I really like that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, Walter. Appreciate it. See ya. See ya.